see you ladies here. It has been a great day. I've had uh, to take the grandchild to the doctor, but <laughs> all is good. All is good. It's been a very eventful day, a very eventful Thursday, but I'm excited about tonight. I'm excited to see you ladies on here and to talk about what should my exercise look like after the age of 40. And it's a little bit different. And you know what, I, I am excited to discuss this because these are things that I learned not too long ago. I did not get in shape until after the age of 50. You know, I was one of those people who hit the gym and would do it for a while and then quit and hit the gym and then quit. You know, most of us do that. I'd eat right and then for a while and see a little bit of results maybe and then quit. You know, I go back to the thing that I used to do that made me want to die in the beginning. So that's how I've lived most of my life. But at the age of 50, 51, I um, was going through perimenopause and now I'm completely through menopause. I just turned 55 this month. And um, you know, there's been a lot of changes, but I had to do a lot of learning because I didn't understand how hormones and things affected our bodies and weight loss and things like that. So. I'm excited to share this today and what our exercise should look like. Hi, Deanne, it's so good to see you on here. So first I wanna talk about cardio, right? What should our cardio look like? And there's a reason I wanna talk about this, um, but first let me say this, let me say this first. Stress is a really big issue in most of our lives, right? You know, Cortisol is a thing you hear about and people will say cortisol is an awful thing. Um, it's going to cause you to gain belly fat. But honestly, cortisol is a, it's a hormone. Hi, Deanna. Deanne, and there's Carol on here. It's good to see you all. Cortisol is a hormone that is actually a very good life-saving hormone when it's working the right way. Okay, so our ancestors, cortisol was great for them. You know, if they were being chased by a bear, cortisol levels rise and it causes more blood to go, or more sugar to go into your bloodstream. And that's a burst of energy that you need to escape, maybe escape for your life, right? So that cortisol is a really good thing, right? For our ancestors. And for us too, if we were to do, if we'd have to run or, or be in chased or who knows what would happen, you know, cortisol levels, save a child. Cortisol levels are great, great things. But today in our society, we have so much stress. How many of you ladies have a lot of stress? I wanna hear from you if you're having a lot of stress. Maybe it's at work, your job, maybe it's your Facebook friends legit. <laughs> you can always unfriend ladies. And I'm going to tell you why it's so important to reduce your stress levels for many, many reasons, but especially for health and body reasons. Hi, Margaret. Good to see you. So we all have a lot of stress. It seems like a lot of you do too. Give me that thumbs up if you're dealing with some stress because stress is something I too deal with every day, you know, trying to build a company here at Bod Babes and the Bod Garage and just really busy lives and social media is very, very stressful. Life today, today alone and yesterday, oh my gosh, yesterday was so stressful. And what happens when we're under chronic, uh, chronic stress like that, it becomes bad for our bodies. Our cortisol levels, instead of running from a bear, you know, and trying to save our lives, our cortisol levels will raise and it'll throw that, our cortisol will throw that sugar into our bloodstream. Not a good thing because it will mess up our hormones. Here's what it does. So there are estrogen, you guys have heard of estrogen because we're women, right? Testosterone and progesterone. Okay, those three work really hand in hand with each other and they're very important. Even testosterone is very important to us ladies. And here's why cortisol, when you're under stress for a lot, a lot of time, you know, and, it's, and it raises those cortisol levels for a long time, here's why it's such a big deal. It messes with our hormones and how it messes with our hormones is this. It takes progesterone 
to make cortisol. Okay, so progesterone and estrogen kind of work together in this beautiful balance. When progesterone is down or being depleted, then estrogen rises. It can cause estrogen dominance. Okay, and I'm not going to be real technical very long. So listen, you really need to know this. And when you have estrogen dominance because of stress and cortisol using up that progesterone, that progesterone making that cortisol, your estrogen dominance makes you want to gain weight. So you can gain weight and especially that visceral fat around our tummies, okay? And so that's the bad kind of fat. It can cause us to gain that fat, not only regular fat, but visceral fat, the fat that is that dark yellow fat that causes cancer, heart disease, and all these things. It's the fat that wraps around our internal organs. That's a big deal. So, you know, exercise is really, really good to a point, but exercises for a, a person over the age of 40 need to be looked at differently. So we talked about cardio. How many of you love cardio? And if you love cardio, I want you to write below what type of cardio you absolutely love. Whether it's running, do you run races, do you jog? Write it below. Do you do jumping jacks, jump rope? What is it? What's your cardio? What do you like? Hi Claire, and what do you do? You know, do you run marathons? Do you do hit? Do you do the trampoline? What is it that you do? Nobody does cardio? Come on, let me know. <laughs> let me know. You want to know? I'm going to tell you in just a second. Trail runs. That's good, Deanna. Deanne, why do I want to call you Deanna? I have a friend named Deanna. Trail runs. I have never done that. Thumbs down. Yuck to cardio, Margaret said. Hi, Teresa Briggs. Missy girl. Claire, spinning. Wow, I have never done that. I have a friend, Donna, who does spinning classes, actually. She's, she, she's up in front. She does all that stuff. She's the coach, so it's very cool. Spinning, I haven't tried it. I'm going to tell you guys, I told you I would tell you my favorite cardio. I'm with Margaret on this. I hate cardio. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. My husband hates it, too, he said. If uh, I'll run, I'll definitely run if someone steals my wife, my dog, or my dinner. And that's when he's going to run. <laughs> and so I kind of agree with him there. But, you know, working out and exercise is really good for your stress levels, but there's an if. Now listen to me, if. It's not overdone because our bodies right now are under so much stress. If you're feeling a lot of stress, if you're not if you're not eating right, if you're not sleeping, if you're you have a job you absolutely hate to go to, if you're having issues, you know, some type of really stressful issues in your life like we all do at times. Did you know that working out at 100%, like you giving your all could actually be a detriment to you. Did you know that? So while exercise is good, we have to look at the whole picture. When we go to exercise, it is good. It helps with our stress levels. But if we go in there six, seven days a week and we're killing it for two or three hours, that brings our stress levels up even higher and our cortisol levels even higher. It messes with our hormones. Ladies, is this overworking in the gym when your stress is high and you think it's gonna help me? Actually, if you're one of those people, and there's very few of those, people out there. So kudos to you, but you know what? Cause I can't do it, but kudos to you. That's impressive to me, but I want you to think about eliminating the stresses in your life more because if you're not sleeping right and you've got chronic stress every day, you're probably not getting the results you want to get in the gym. And then you think, I just need to work harder. I just need to work harder. And that is not true. You need to get your rest and you'll see more benefits from your gym workouts. You'll see more improvement in your body, in your strength training, in your health, and all of that. So always taking into consideration what your life looks like. Yes, exercise is good. I do it every single week. I exercise, I weight train. 
okay? But watch it, be careful, get your sleep. Know when is enough and know when to rest. I have women that come on and wanna work with me to lose weight and they say, well, the more I work out, the better. And their lives are just very stressful. Company owners, you know, women that are nurses, all of this, and they say, I just need to work out more. And so they're sleeping less so they can work out more or they can get their workout in and maybe they're getting five or six hours of sleep and I'm like, we need to rethink this because sleep is important and without that recovery you're not going to get the benefits of the exercise that you actually feel like you're getting actually it could make things worse for you physically and mentally and everything else okay and it can really mess up your hormones and so let's find a balance okay for those of us who are not working out or working out at a normal range that wouldn't apply all right but i want to talk about this cardio because cardio when i was younger i used to think i gotta lose weight cardio 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 and here's the thing, we just talked about stress levels so and cortisol. So if you do long cardio, like if you go and you hit the gym and you're on the cardio machine for an hour, two hours, five days a week, six days a week, that sounds like that's great, correct? But for women over the age of 40, it is not. Okay, it is not. Because here's what happens when you do cardio like that, and most of us are guilty of that. I think if I need to lose weight, I need to go, I need to go run, I need to jog, I need to do some hit, I need to do all these things. And here's the thing, it has to be done, cardio has to be done now in moderation. Okay, maybe two, three times a week, and maybe it's only 20 minutes at a time. For those of us who hate cardio, yay! <laughs> For those of us who love cardio, you're looking at me going, that can't be right. But I'm telling you the truth, that women over the age of 40 need to slow down on the cardio. If we wanna lose weight, there's other ways to do it. But cardio causes more stress in our bodies, which causes our cortisol levels to raise, which uses up our progesterone, which makes our estrogen just fly up, and it lowers our testosterone, and we have estrogen dominance, and we gain weight, and especially around the middle. So if you're working out real hard, or you're doing a lot of cardio, and you're wondering, what is this? then I suggest you pull the cardio back. And it sounds counterintuitive, right? You're like, what? Pull my exercise back to lose weight? Yes, pull it back, ladies, because it can really mess up your hormones if you're doing too much cardio. You know, two or three times a week cardio for 20 minutes, that's not too much cardio. I wouldn't think that that would mess up your hormone levels unless you're having adrenal fatigue or something like that, unless you're under huge amounts of stress and not sleeping. So get in, you know, two or three times a week, some cardio, some running or some hit, something like that to get that heart rate up because it's great for your heart and it's also great for weight loss, all right? so. What I would suggest instead of really long running, you know, an hour, two, six, seven days a week, what I would suggest would be walking fast. That sounds funny, right? Like why would walking fast or walking be better for me than running to lose weight? Because your cortisol levels don't raise as much. So make sure you get those steps in. Those steps are what you need. You need to get those steps in. So if you aren't getting 10,000 steps a day, let that be goal. But is that where you start? No. <laughs> if I tell you, hey, uh, Alicia, you need to get in 10,000 steps a day and let's just start that tomorrow. And your life is already crazy and full. Guess what? It's gonna put more stress on you, right? That's the last thing I wanna do. So let's start at, find out where you are. Turn your tracker on, your step tracker on your phone. You should have one or your Apple Watch or something, your Fitbit. Turn it on and see what your steps are and make a goal to go two or 3,000 more steps. Start there. Maybe you're at 3,000 steps. Maybe you're at 1,500 steps. Maybe you have a desk job and you don't move much. Set it up to 3,000. If you're at 1,000 steps, set it up to 3,000. If you're at 3,000 steps, set it up to 5,000. If you're getting 5,000 steps in every day, great. Get seven in and get it up. Keep walking it up until you get to that 10,000 steps. 
Those 10,000 steps are so good for your weight loss, your body, your stress levels, your cortisol levels, bringing it down, you know, and so get those steps in and prefer it over long extended forms of cardio because of many reasons and mostly our weight and our hormones, right? So don't go with long periods, doing long periods of cardio workouts. It's just not gonna work when you're over the age of 40. It's gonna cause you more problems than good, right? So ladies, if you're doing that trail walking, that trail walking sounds great to me, but if you're doing it seven days a week, that's gonna be hard on you. So find a balance in it, all right? So stress, stress, we got to get the stress out of our lives. It may be unpopular and make you feel uncomfortable to unfriend somebody on Facebook, but don't be afraid to do it because your health, you know, you might deal with some stress when you do it because you're going to feel bad about it maybe, and some of you won't, but some of you will, and then they might go, hey, how come you unfriended me on Facebook? You know, you can also hide their their timeline or their feed. You can hide it from showing up in your timeline or feed or whatever it's called. Do that. Just hide them. If they're causing a lot of drama and chaos and, you know, there can be some crazy people on Facebook. Just go ahead and hide them. And if you're okay to unfriend them, just unfriend them. All right? And just get that stress out of your life. And if you've got a job that's really, really stressful, you know, consider making a job change. Consider it. If there's people in your life outside of Facebook that are stressful, get it out of your life. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing, ladies. Your health is important. And that stress and that, that cortisol, it's not only affecting our weight, but it also affects our hearts and our bodies in so many different ways. Okay, so I harbored on that just a minute and I hope you hear my heart. It's okay. It's okay. We're in our 40s. We're in our 50s. We're in our 60s. We're in our 70s. It's okay to get rid of some people out of our life. It's okay. And I've done it and it was hard, but it was one of the best things I've ever done and made me a better person because I wasn't so crazy with all the stress. All right, so feel free to do that. It's okay. Just tell them Allie said it's okay. Send them my way. <laughs> well, they unfriended me. Well, Allie said it's okay. <laughs> All right, let's see what Heather said is true. Just in a little time I've been lifting weights, I've seen a difference than just walking instead. It is so true, Heather. I'm going to talk about the next thing. Next is what type of workout should I do? If you're lower in my cardio, Allie, then what should my workout look like? resistance training resistance training how many of you do resistance training of some type there's many types out there one is weightlifting. that's the one i do there's things like trx straps some of you do those if you weight train or resistance train of some type write it below i want to hear from you what do you do so there's also things like body weight exercises there's those, my husband does those on YouTube. There's about 195 to 199, something like that. Body weight exercises that he's done on YouTube, you can go work out with. There's 30 minute exercises you can do right at the house. How about bands? How many of you use bands? If you use bands, right, I use bands below. You know, you can do all kinds of things with bands at the house. You don't have to get out and go to the gym. And I wanna talk to you about why resistance training over cardio. Well, I already told you cardio is good, but it needs to be at a minimum, right? Uh, <laughs> my, my sister says this, pushing my heavy behind out of a chair count as resistance training. You're using your body weight, so it's resistance training. <laughs> I love you, sis. <laughs> it's resistance training. Circuit training in class, Shelly. That is a good, a good resistance training. I love circuit training at Planet Fitness. It's great. Uh, Heather says weightlifting and bands, then body weight resistance. Those are all so good. Margaret says body weight and hand weights, raking and picking up walnuts. Yes, that's resistance training. Let's talk about why resistance training is so good. And do you have to go to the gym and lift weights like I do? No, no, you don't. 
but I'm gonna tell you what, it's a great thing. And it made me so nervous to walk in that gym and lift weights because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing at all. It's intimidation, right? It's totally intimidation. And um, I honestly was nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, everybody's watching me. I don't know how to do this right. You know, I'm thinking about how I look in my workout clothes, which was just a t-shirt and some workout pants and thinking that, you know, people are looking at me and stuff. But here, I want to calm your heart a little bit. And I wish I would have thought of this when I started it. Ladies, everybody was a beginner at one time. Even the people who were just in there with the big beefy muscles, they were a beginner at one time. It's okay. And you know what? Those people with big beefy muscles who've been working out, they're probably thinking, is so-and-so watching me too? You know, they're thinking, oh God, do I look crazy over here trying to lift this weight and I can't lift it? You know, I just failed in front of everybody. So let go of it and it's okay. You know, let go of it and know that everybody has come in the gym and had to learn. Do you have to do gym workouts? No. Like I said, you can do resistance training with bands at home. There's some you can get on Amazon. The reason to do resistance training, whether bands, TRX, weightlifting, body weight exercises, and something like that, the reason is this. For women over the age of 40, it helps balance your hormones. Listen to me. Resistance training helps you balance your hormones. Did you know that? When our hormones are going crazy, Resistance training can help balance those along with many other things like changing our diets, right? So, you don't have to lift weights in the gym. I prefer you do, but if you that's not your thing, then find some form of resistance training that works for you. Bands, using those, hand weights at the house, body weight exercises, TRX straps, uh, all kinds of cool resistance training that you can do. It helps balance your hormones, which is great. Who wants to get rid of some hormone issues? That would be me. <laughs> and that would probably be you too, because we're all over 40, right? So yes, so um, another thing, resistance training helps change the look of your body. It helps re re uh, reverse the look of an aging body. What do I mean by that? I call it body recomposition, okay? So a diet is going to help you become basically a smaller version of yourself right now. The right diet with resistance training will help your body change form and kind of reverse in time. It'll put that waistline back in there that I didn't know how I was going to get off, right? And here's what else resistance training does. It helps you build muscle. I want to stop you right there and think and say to you, ladies, you're not going to look like one of those muscly women. That's they're taking other stuff. That is, we don't have enough testosterone to look like that. I lift 600 pounds sometimes. Look at me. You can't even, my granddaughter says, Mama, you don't have muscles. And I'm like, I'm working hard for those. <laughs> so you know what? It won't make you look like that, but it'll build back muscle, which changes the look of your body. But listen to this. More muscle means a faster metabolism. We all age and we lose muscle after the age of 30. As we age, it just happens. And so going into the gym or doing some type of resistance training, even at home, is very helpful because it helps build back muscle. And the more muscle we have, the more calories we burn. We burn more calories sitting around the house. We burn more calories with more muscle when we're working out. So the less muscle we have, the slower our metabolism, which means we could be eating the same amount of food we always ate and working out like we always did. But if we've lost muscle, we're gonna be gaining fat. That stinks to work so hard and see such little results. So weight training is also helpful for that. But listen to this. As we age, it doesn't only help our hormones to weight train or resistance train. It not only helps that, it helps our stress levels, which helps our cortisol levels, right? Which helps keeps, keeps all those hormones in check. It builds back muscle, 
which helps our metabolism to fire up and start burning quicker again. It changes the look of our bodies to be reverse aging, really. I look like my body's reversed in age since I started lifting weights and you have to continually do it. You can't just do it for a short, a short term, okay? Because you'll get that muscle loss back. So you gotta keep going with the weight training. And once you start it, you'll begin loving it when you start seeing results. And here's what else it does. It helps fight osteoporosis. Listen to me. It helps fight osteoporosis and bone loss. How many of you have gone to your doctor and been told that your bone dis density is not what it should be? That we're losing bone. It's filling with holes and those types of things. And here's why weight training or resistance training helps with that. It puts pressure when you're resistance training, pulling those bands or lifting those weights or doing those push-ups with your arms, okay? Maybe you can't even do one, but I wanna stop you there. It's okay. Some of us, I couldn't do one either when I started out. I started on my knees. I could barely even do barely half of one, but the more you do them, the stronger you'll get. And so start somewhere. It's okay. You're not gonna drop to the ground and be able to do 10, okay? Start somewhere, get one in. Okay, and when you get one, then the next goal is two, right? So start slow, but listen to this. That resistance training puts pressure on those bones, not only the muscle growing, but the bones. They get like these little, little tiny breaks in them. And what happens is they have to repair. Those little breaks aren't bad things. It's really a good thing, okay? Because our bones then, have to, they have to heal. And when they heal, they become stronger. So that resistance training will fight osteoporosis and fight you losing that bone and becoming susceptible to breaks in our bones as we get older. So get those bands, go pick up some off Amazon. If you don't know what to get, I'll help you. If you don't wanna go to the gym, I'll help you find some, some bands that you can use um, and they have some that are really heavy. I, some of them go up to, I've seen some up to 150 pounds of resistance. I couldn't pull 150 pounds of resistance most likely. I can push it, but I don't know that I can pull it with my arm. So you know what? There's some great alternatives out there. And then once again, we've got our own body weight to start with, right? If you weigh 150, 160 pounds, 200 pounds, you're pushing that weight. So that resistance is not only good for your metabolism, but it's also good for your bones. And I wanna to talk to you about this too. Here is the next exercise. So I would, so what would I do uh, over 40? Less than cardio, do it two or three days a week, 20 minutes each time. Increase your walking instead, all right? Increase your walking instead. Get some form of resistance training because it helps also balance your hormones. It helps you uh, prevent osteoporosis. It helps you strengthen your bones if you have some, uh, some bone density loss, okay? And it helps build muscle, which helps rebuild your metabolism and changes the look of your body. They got that reverse aging kind of look thing. Okay, so, so those two things. And the next one I would do would be impact exercises. Impact exercises, what are those? They're so important because those help us as well with bone loss. So those impact like running up a flight of stairs or walking up a flight of stairs. Walking quickly, where you feel your legs hitting the ground pretty hard. Make sure to wear some good shoes, right? Jumping on a trampoline, outside or an indoor trampoline. These types of things help and fight against bone loss. And they help your bones actually become stronger. So those impact exercises, that walking that we were talking about is one of those. So walking, jogging for short periods of time. Um, and yeah, we a lot of us have knee problems right now. So find those impact exercises that maybe you can do like the trampoline, indoor trampoline, get those in. Now listen, if your doctor has told you that you have osteoporosis already, then you need to speak with your doctor and ask him 
What impact exercises can I personally do? What type of weight training can I personally do? How much would you recommend I lift or, or my bands uh, have resistance against me? He will tell you exactly where to start because I don't know. You know, if you have full-fledged osteoporosis, the last thing you want to do is go jump on a trampoline and not know what you're getting into or lifting 100 pounds or even 50 pounds and sometimes even 10 pounds, okay? So contact your doctor, go in for a visit and ask him, where do I start? My coach at Bod Babes was talking about resistance training and re resistance training and impact to help my muscles and my bones and help with my hormones. Where should I start? Reach out to your doctor. It's very important that you do that. All right, so impact exercises are so, so important. The fourth exercise I want to talk to you guys about is this, stretching. How many of you ladies feel amazing when you stretch? Give me a thumbs up. And how many of you ladies feel like crap when you stretch? <laughs> that would be me. My tendons and things don't want to move. My muscles don't want to move. And I work out all the time. And you know, for me, it's just a mess. And so, it's very important to stretch though. So something like yoga would also be very, very great. And um, that stretching is gonna help with your mobility, okay? So make sure to get your stretching in. It's very important. Nicole says the vibration pads, are, are they a form of impact? Yes, they are, Nicole. Thank you for bringing that up. Great job. Thank you so much, my friend, because yes. So Planet Fitness even has those vibration. You can go in there and they have the vibration kind of stand up. Uh, it even has red light. You can go in there and stand up and it kind of does this. That is impact. It will help with that bone density some, all right? So consider putting that into your life. Once again, if you have osteoporosis, speak with your doctor. Um, the stretching, let's stay right there. Because we want to be mobile, you know, if we are not, um, if we are not able to move around, you know, we're gonna get hurt. Abby says she has a vibration pad, need to use it. Yes, do it, use it, it's very important. So um, we want to be able to have long range motion as much as possible. And maybe you'll just start right here. Maybe you can't put your hand, you know, behind your back. But start somewhere and start stretching out. It feels so bad sometimes to stretch, but so good after. And stretching before bed is going to help you in so many ways get some rest. I used to stretch before bed, and I need to kind of get back to that. And I'm going to tell you what. It will really help you with mobility, and it's going to help you not get injured in the future. So go ahead and start stretching. So those four things are the things I would implement. So what would my workout week look like is this, okay? Here's what I would suggest, and this is just a sample workout. I would say on Monday, do some form of resistance training. I'm gonna do weight training at the gym. You could do body weight training, bands, weights at home, whatever, body weight exercises at home or at the gym. That would be Monday. Tuesday, I would recommend stretching and walking. Maybe something like yoga would be a great, great thing to incorporate into your life. Every day, of course, try to get those steps in every day, okay? But on the walking on Tuesday, I would wanna get some quick walking in there. Just put in some quick walking, get some cardio in there. Um, and so that's what I would do. So Tuesday would be yoga, stretching, walking, those types of things. Wednesday, back to weight training. So I've got Monday and Wednesday with resistance training, weight training bands. And then Thursday, I would add in the yoga or the stretching and that type of thing, the walking, um, those things again. Friday, back to weight training, all right? So you've got three days of weight training, and then you've got two days of the stretching and the quick walking and all of those things, all right? So that's what I would do. Another form of impact exercises that we did not talk about is jump rope. Some of you like to jump rope. 
And you know, that's a great form of exercise. Jump rope, trampoline, all of those things. One of my clients sent me a picture of an elephant jumping on this big trampoline outside. That'd be fun. <laughs> I don't think it was real, but it was cute. But those things are what I would focus on after the age of 40. And those are the things that I focus on. Sometimes I fall a little short of my stretching. Sometimes I fall a little short of my walking and I need to work on those. So well, I love my weight training, my resistance training. If you want more information on this, reach out to me, send me a message, and I would love to talk to you or drop it below. Um, get your impact exercises in, get your resistance training in, get your walking in, and get your short form cardio in, two or three times a week, 20 minutes, and that's it, okay? Don't overdo the cardio and mess up your hormones and your cortisol levels and all of that. And here's one thing that I think is most important. These exercises won't do you very good, much good at all, if you're not getting stress out of your life other places too. Get your sleep, prioritize yourself. We all say, I, I don't have time to do this or I don't have time to do that. It's so important to make time for yourself. We've only got one body. There's only one you and you are important. Your quality of life is important and you're giving the best you to those you love when you make yourself a priority. Your best you. We want to show our kids and our grandkids what it's like to be our best because guess what? We want them to live their best lives and they want us to live our best too. So let's do our best to be our best versions of ourselves, our healthiest versions. I love you guys. Thanks for spending time with me tonight. Focus on those four things. What are they? Who knows what they are? Write them below. Vicki said she just got done walking 5.18 miles. Very, very good. So, little, little bits of cardio, cardio, two to three times a week. I'm gonna say it one more time again. Why? If you didn't, if you're just tuning in, go back in the video, you'll find out why. Two to three times a week, maybe 20 minutes at a time. That's all the cardio you're going to need. Get your diet right and that should be all the cardio you need. Resistance training of some type, weightlifting, bands, body weight, TRX, something. Impact exercises. If you don't know why, go back in the video. They're very, very important. Very, very, very important. Okay? And stretching. So important, guys. Get rid of the stress. I love you. Have a great night. Make yourself a priority. You'll love that you did. You'll be proud that you did. And you should be proud.